We're absolutely dying to compare these two. This is the Onyx Books Max 3 and the Sony DPT RP1. These are both 13.3 inch devices. They're both very similar in the sense where they're big white slates that do note taking with an e-ink screen. But they are drastically different in a bunch of other ways we're just gonna dive in right now. Starting with the Onyx, it is completely bare bones compared to the Sony. You have a little stylus loop right there. You have a piano finish eraser with a matte body design, no secondary tertiary buttons, and a plastic nib on the tip right there. The nibs are replaceable and they don't wear down very quick. You also can't open it up, although there is this seam. I'm sure you can, but we're not going to torque on it uh, at the risk of wrecking anything. But the stylus actually is pretty simple. We've said it a bunch of times before and we'll say it again, this is one of the most labor intensive styluses or styli on the market. It has a lithium ion battery inside, it has a micro USB charging port with an LED indicator that you have to keep charged because if you don't it will not work with the device. It also doesn't work on any other device and no other pens work on the Sony. It also has a stylus loop right there. It doesn't have any eraser function at the back. This is just for style purposes, but it does have two buttons down here. This is the eraser button and the highlight button. The nibs are graphite nibs, so they wear down very, very quickly, but they offer the best writing experience that we've ever found on any device. It also also is weighted very nicely and made out of aluminum. It also has the ability to latch onto the side of the device via magnet so you actually don't have to have a case or anything like that. It just snaps on like so. The UI on the Onyx is a lot better than the Sony and we'll explain why. You have library, shop, note, storage, apps, and settings. This is an Android e-reader first and foremost and it's Android to the point where you can install APK files, load in your own apps and do everything else. You can also swipe the top down and get a whole bunch of settings, Google Play services, Wi-Fi, rotation, Bluetooth, th four different modes actually, normal, speed, A2 and X mode. X mode allows you to actually watch videos and uh, YouTube broad video broadcasting and everything else. You also get a contrast slider bar. The customization on this is absolutely endless because it is a fully fledged Android e-reader with an octa-core processor running Android 9. The Sony, however, doesn't even have a home screen. It has a top button here and you have documents, notes, create notes, settings, and set up the digital paper app. You can't even drag and drop files to this device because it requires a computer application to do so. You actually can't even connect to Wi-Fi on this device without a computer. You can't go to a Starbucks or McDonald's and just connect to Wi-Fi. We have an Android version of this device where you can install your own APKs and watch, uh, you know, uh, read memes and go on Facebook and use Outlook and stuff like that, but the base model device actually doesn't do any of that. You do have NFC and that's about as most of a communication that you you can get out of it because Bluetooth and why I say that is because Bluetooth doesn't actually have any audio capabilities even if you turn it on because this thing can't run anything except PDF files so so far the Sony has quite a bit of limitations we're primarily going to focus on notes because that's what you're buying these devices for. If you want to look at the individual review videos, go on YouTube to our channel, we have them there. First thing we actually want to look at is backgrounds and why this is is because on the Onyx you can change them anytime you want on any page and they have a bunch of them. On the Sony, they do have seven of them, however, you can't change them on the fly, you can only change them when you're creating a note and you can't see what they all look like. But we're just going to click blank portrait because it is just a white frame and we're going to do the same on the uh, Onyx so we can just get started. But we are going to start on the Onyx. <clears throat> so this is going to take a little bit of time, so buckle up. You do have brush, pen, uh, pencil, line, triangle, circles, and squares. You also have a whole bunch of colors, and we're going to showcase that right now. We'll go on black, 
Here's the black color. And colors have become more prominent over the years because people want them because uh, they're getting more uh, functional, these devices, than just having black and white. And this is gray and we have light gray. Light gray just acts as a, uh, sorry, the white just acts as an eraser because, well, it's just white. Red, green, and blue actually just show up as kind of a grayed out black, but it doesn't actually show anything till you export it. Although it does have it, you won't see it here. So that is going to be a little bit of a problem. Their eraser works very nicely and it is the entire stroke but you can get around that by just clicking here and you can do moving eraser and erase like that or erase all and wipe the whole page away. You can press the refresh if you see too much staining on the screen. We're gonna go back to our brush. Actually, you know what? We're gonna make a geometric shape. We're gonna make two squares like that and then we're gonna join that to make some three dimensions. Then we're gonna grab our lasso tool, lasso that up and we can now move that around as a almost a transparent PNG image. You can expand it, you can change the aspect, which a lot of devices don't allow you to do, it's usually locked, and you can rotate it around as well as copy and paste it. And you can delete as well. The, this device also has handwriting recognition, so if I just write my name like that, on the screen, I can press the little A cursor button and I can choose reflow recognition, which will reflow it into text, or I can go original and it'll just show up right there. Boom, we're done. You can change some stuff from there and the fonts, the bold, italicize, and underlines can all be changed from the top. So that is very nice. You also have ban mode, which is actually, in my opinion, useless because even with five touches on the screen, it does not change the effectivity of the screen whatsoever. It works perfectly fine. Ban mode is just there as a precaution. And yes, you can rest your palm on the screen as you write. You can even rest two palms on the screen as you write. It doesn't get in the way. So that's all very nice. Click on that to get out. Refresh to wipe away everything as well. You can add a page, minus a page, yes, you'd like to delete it. And you can go here to export, share, insert picture, and custom toolbar. If you click on custom toolbar, you can add certain things like maybe I wanna add the picture, add the share, and add the export. You can do that wherever you want. You can click the top left corner to full screen it and click it again to go out. So that's all very nice and it's very customizable and you can actually make paintings and geographic graphs on this for your educational purposes. Sony is much more bare bones, extremely bare bones. So we have the pen, that's it, blue and red. So it'll show up blue by, it'll show up black on the screen by default. If we go to the largest one here, we can show you. So this will be blue. And if we click on red, this will be red. And red does show up as gray for now, but it will mostly be for grading papers and stuff. So if you write a bunch of X's, it'll turn gray. These will be for the wrong answers. Once you export your document onto your computer, these will be red and this will be blue. So there is actually no black unless you turn it to black and white. There's also no pressure sensitivity, but the eraser is very, very nice. It wipes away things very quickly like so and you do have a zoom level as well. So if we draw something on the screen like this, we we'll draw our world famous box, we can click on zoom and you have to tap the area in which you want to zoom. From there, you can make your little details like that, but you can't actually pinch and zoom any bigger than that. And basically you have to exit out. And then once you do, it's left with just that. You can't actually zoom in any bigger than you want to. You have search, but this is mostly for PDFs and it does search very well because this thing is a PDF beast. And uh, we'll show two page spread in a second. We're gonna do area selection. And area selection is very nice because you can actually isolate certain areas and they outline themselves in si kind of this cartoony look kind of thing and you can move that around and you can move it around actually pixel by pixel if you go really slow here you can see you can move it around pixel by pixel and line it back up so it's actually quite nice and not a lot of devices do this sort of faux a2 mode just on the isolated segment you can see none of this is refreshing it's only this isolated segment that's actually refreshing and you can click done and it'll stay there and you can go ahead and move it around again and 
do as much area selection as you want. But that is basically it in terms of the functionality. There's no other pens, there's no paint brushes, there's no paint pressure sensitivity or anything else like that. But we have to say that this was uh, voted by basically everyone in the studio's offices in over three different locations. This is the best writing experience feel. Not the customization, not the paintbrush palette and stuff like that. This has the best feel of any device we've used. It started the whole flush screen and bezel trend way early on when this was released. And there is no device that gives you this level of feeling. It is so light, it is so torquey, you get the right amount of grit. It's just an absolute wonder to write on. The Max is dang close, we will say that, when this thing came out. But you do still have a lot of that smooth glass feel to it because it is a flush screen and bezel, but it's not grainy in the sense that the Sony is. The Sony has a little bit of texture to it. The Max doesn't really. It's very smooth like a window, so you do lose a little bit of writing feel with the Max compared to the Sony. Please excuse the weird shot. This is incredibly difficult to fit on camera. This is a lot of screen here. You can see just by my hands. They both do split screen, but they don't just do document and note, document and note. You can actually choose any side on any, any document on any side and they both operate autonomously. So I can choose a book and a note sample or a blank portrait or a PDF or whatever I want on either side. So I can take my notes here, note, note, switch window. The Onyx actually has to initiate a switch window every time you go back. So you can see it says switch window. The Sony doesn't have that. You can just actually write on both sides. So it is a lot quicker when it comes to documents side by side. And here's that highlighter button we talked about. You can highlight any text on anything on any document, side loaded or not. The ones that come with the device, the ones you download, it you can actually highlight over it. 10 different times and there'll be 10 different shades of gray, dark gray, up to black until you almost can't see the letter anymore. But the document side by side is very, very nice because it actually allows you to run anything on one side and anything on the other side. And both devices can do it absolutely beautifully. They both have pros and cons. The Sony is less functional, yes. So the base model that doesn't have Android on it is very limiting. You can't connect to Wi-Fi, you can't transfer files, but it does have very quick side-by-side. -side. You can use any document and any notepad and any document and any document. The stylus is the best on the market and you have the best writing feel out of any device currently available. The Max, however, has way more pros than it has cons. In fact, the only con this device has out of any device in any comparison is the price tag. It is very expensive, but with that you get the absolute latest technology that feels like you're not even using an e-reader anymore. With the X mode being able to play videos, this thing might as well be a tablet. We are looking at a kind of transition in the e-reader world that they are catching up to tablets very soon they're closing that gap on the max and on the sony you're both going to get a great feel so it just comes down to which one you want the sony's actually a little bit cheaper now that it has aged a couple years but if you want the latest and greatest the max is the way to go for goodyreader.com in a comparison between the max 3 and the sony dpt rp1 this is peter